Next up for Vincent after shock was the 1946 gothic romance Dragonwick, a costume period piece based on the novel of the same name. Our story begins on a Connecticut farm in the year 1844, where a young girl named Miranda Wells, played by Jean Tierney, lives with her parents, played by Walter Houston and Anne Revere. One day, a letter arrives from a distant cousin named Nicholas Van Ryan, played by Vincent Price, the wealthy owner of the sprawling Dragonwick estate, inquiring if one of the Wells' daughters could move to Dragonwick to serve as governess for his young daughter, Katrine. Miranda's parents initially refuse, but she eventually persuades them to let her go. Once at the estate, Miranda quickly learns that her simple country ways differ greatly from the fancy affairs at Dragonwick. Nicholas and his wife Johanna, played by Vivian Osborne, are aloof and cold towards one another, and all but neglect their daughter Katrine, played by Connie Marshall. In addition, a sense of dark foreboding hangs over the mansion, and a maid offers this word of warning. One day you will wish with all your heart you'd never come to Dragonwick. As Miranda struggles to fit in with high-class society, Nicholas takes an immediate liking to her, smitten with her beauty and innocent charm. Nicholas is a rich land baron who leases his land to farmers. These tenants are unhappy with this arrangement and wish to purchase the land for themselves. Nicholas refuses and they threaten revolt. One evening, Nicholas gives an oleander plant to his wife as offer of apology for being so distant. She cheers up immediately and expresses her wish to spend more time together and travel. Why, Nicholas, it's your favorite oleander. I thought it would brighten your room and perhaps make your stay in bed less unbearable. Oh, thank you so much. Can't remember when anything has pleased me more. Nicholas agrees, but later that evening tragedy strikes and Joanna dies suddenly and mysteriously. The town doctor, Dr. Jeff Turner, played by Glenn Langan, is unable to discover the cause. Dr. Turner. I can't understand it. It doesn't make sense. Seemingly within minutes of his wife's death, Nicholas expresses his love for Miranda. Shocked, she leaves the estate the following day and moves back to her parents' house. She soon realizes, however, that she has grown accustomed to the extravagant surroundings and lifestyle of Dragonwick and has, in fact, grown equally fond of Nicholas as well. He calls on her and they agree to be married to her parents' disappointment. They don't like or trust the haughty and arrogant Nicholas. Nicholas and Miranda return to Dragonwick, but over time she discovers that her life there isn't the idyllic happy one that she'd envisioned. Nicholas is self-obsessed and increasingly distant and displays his general disdain for the church and religion in particular, which is in diametric opposition with Miranda's devout Christian upbringing. Now let us enjoy our lunch. Nicholas, you do believe in God. I believe in myself and I am answerable to myself. I will not live according to printed mottos like the directions on a medicine bottle. Nicholas is arrogant and mean-spirited, and Vincent pulls this off perfectly, as demonstrated in this scene where he derides Miranda for hiring a lame housekeeper named Peggy, played by Jessica Tandy. And what was that strange little creature? That was Peggy. Peggy O'Malley. I assumed it had a name. What was it doing here? I've engaged her as my personal maid. Your maid? That untidy little cripple? She's not untidy, and her leg's no fault of hers. She's had a miserable life. It's the strangest recommendation I've ever heard. She's bright and willing and good to me, and Nicholas, I want her as my maid. I shall have McNabb give her some extra money and a good character. It's so little to ask. Please, Nicholas. Deformed bodies depress me. Meanwhile, Miranda discovers she's pregnant. Nicholas is thrilled. He desperately wants a son to carry on the Van Ryan name, and his previous wife had been unable to provide him with one. His excitement is short-lived, however, as his son is born with a congenital heart defect and dies within minutes. Before the baby passes away, Miranda baptizes him, further infuriating Nicholas. Please, don't leave him now. Please. You loathsome little cripple. Why should you have been permitted to live and not my son? Nicholas begins spending an increasing amount of time isolated, locked away in a private chamber in an upper tower of the house. 
Miranda eventually confronts him there and discovers he's become a drug addict. Shall I tell you what you want to know? Brace yourself. Prepare to have your God-fearing, farm-bred, prayer-fattened morality shaken to its core. See, I have become what is vulgarly known as a drug addict. Between the drugs and the stress, Nicholas begins acting increasingly odd. When Miranda falls mysteriously ill, her housekeeper Peggy pays a visit to Dr. Turner. She tells him how irrational Nicholas is acting and describes how Miranda fell mysteriously ill after Nicholas brought a plant into her room, an oleander plant, very much like the one Dr. Turner saw in Nicholas's previous wife's room. Piecing together that Nicholas is trying to kill Miranda as he had his first wife, Dr. Turner rushes back to Dragonwick to save the day. Dragonwick was directed by Joseph L. Mankiewicz, who also wrote the screenplay. This was his directorial debut, and he handles this film expertly. This was Vincent's fourth and final screen appearance with actress Jean Tierney, having previously worked with her in Laura, Leave Her to Heaven, and Hudson's Bay. Vincent is excellent as the diabolical Van Ryan, and this is the second consecutive film in which he murders his wife. Price seemed custom made for gothic films, particularly ones that revolved around old dark houses. In that sense, Dragonwick is reminiscent of the House of Seven Gables and a precursor to the later series of Poe films Price would become best known for with director Roger Corman. As would happen so often in Price films over the years, his character meets a violent end, shot to death in a confrontation with the townspeople. Have it your way then. Overall, Dragonwick is an entertaining gothic romance with supernatural overtones. It features Price in the lead role in full villainous mode. Studios had finally, by this time, caught on to the fact that Price's true talent lay in playing the baddie, something he would do extensively for the remainder of his career. Next up for Price was the black and white film noir, Moss Rose. Century 21 office, we look into every nook and cranny. Because to find the right buyer quickly, we've got to know what makes your home special. <laughs> well, I'll pick you up in 10 minutes, and believe me, you're going to love it. Last year, we put one and a half million buyers and sellers together. One home at a time. It's perfect. I do hope he comes with the house. Century 21, the largest real estate organization in the world. <laughs> 